many of you guys lost in the middle of it? Kind of the Patrick <laughs> Yeah, kind of confusing. It actually could be four or five different sermons. So how many of you are ready to go for about an hour and a half? I got two, three hands. We'll keep it short. There's no Packer game, so we should be okay. But there's a lot packed in here. And today is Pentecost. 50 days after Easter is the day that God gave the Holy Spirit to the church so that the church would have an advocate or a helper, right? If we read the rest of that section from Acts chapter 2, it talks about how they were able to speak in other tongues and they said things and everybody heard what was being said regardless of what language they spoke in or what language they would hear. Everybody understood what was being said. But we're still in this Romans thing, so we skipped the over part of Acts and went into Romans chapter 8, which is actually one of the best treatises or best theological documents on the Spirit in all of the New Testament. There's so much stuff in here that's, that is wonderful and great news about what God has done for each and every one of us. Right? Because it says that those of us who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And there's this wonderful word in here at the very beginning. Adoption. Right? How many of you know someone who is adopted? Right? And when someone adopts someone, someone from not part of their family, they bring them into their family and they become a part of their family. Right? It's like you become a son or a daughter. And the beautiful thing that we don't get through this word, and it's not in our word adoption, but that's exactly what that word means in the Greek. The word is a breakdown of two different words, and the first word is weos, which means literally is the word for son. And the second one is, is a word that means to incorporate. So the word for adoption in Greek literally means that you are incorporated as a child. It's not just this simple legal matter that becomes, it's an actual change of state where you actually become a child of that family. It's not just legal, it's something more than that. And that's exactly what the Spirit of God does for each and every one of us. You see, God sends His Spirit into the world and specifically into His believers so that they can have someone that's always going to be with them. Because remember at the end of, of Matthew, Jesus promises, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Right? And Jesus is here with us through this Holy Spirit. And the Spirit comes and rests in each and every one of us, and it adopts us as God's child. And by doing that, then we become heirs with Jesus of all of the kingdom. And what is an heir? What's an heir? What is it? Right. Once the, once the person who is the person giving the inheritance or has the kingdom or has the whatever, insert thing here, right? The big castle, big farm, whatever it is. Once that person is no longer here, then the heir is the one who now takes control of that. So as a co-heir of God's kingdom, not that God's going anywhere, but as a co-heir of God's kingdom, at some point we will obtain the full kingdom of God. And what can we do to become an heir? What can you do to become an heir of anything? What can you do? Is there anything you can do to become an heir? Is there anything you can do to get an inheritance? When somebody gives an inheritance, what do you do to get that? You just be there. You're just there. There's actually nothing you can do to get an inheritance, but there's a lot of things you can do to not get an inheritance. Right? I mean, have you ever heard, watch yourself or I'm going to write, write you out of the will. Right? You know, it, it doesn't matter... What you do, you cannot convince someone to give you an inheritance. But it's completely up to them. And God's choice is to give you God's spirit. And by doing that, he makes you his child. And by doing that, he makes you an heir of the kingdom of God. Right? And, and what 
eventually is going to take us away from God. That was later on in the reading here that we Patrick had this morning, right? He talks about how we're going to, the Spirit is always with us and it gives us hope and we hope in what we haven't seen and we hope because we're saved and this hope is going to be there forever. And then the Spirit enters in and it tells us that no matter what happens, nothing's going to take us away from God. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For the sake of, for your sake, we are being killed all day long because we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Right? This past week, Karis and I were at, in Rock Falls, Rock Falls, Illinois, in Sterling, Illinois, for Sock Valley Unite. Sock Valley Unite is basically like a team serve, for those of you that know what a team serve is. They had 35 young people, they were high school kids, all came together and stayed in this church. And on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they went out into the neighborhood and they painted six houses. Completely transformed. And while we were there, we talked about, we, Karis and I, talked to them about who they are in God. And the, the coolest thing for me about this was that some of these kids weren't even part of youth groups. Um, the main person who led this, this whole week thing was a middle school teacher in Rock Falls um, Middle School. And some of her kids came to this, to this event. Some of the kids from the middle school. And some of the, it's not even some of the kids that she had in her current class, it's some of the kids that she had like previously, right? Because these are high school kids and she's a middle school teacher. So these kids come and they don't know anything about God. And they showed up and our theme for the week was enough. That you are enough just as you are. That God takes us where we're at and loves us where we're at because who created us to be where we are? Who created us? God did. God created us the way that we are and put us in a place so that we could do something for him. So we talked this week about how each and every one of those youth was enough exactly the way that they were. And that God takes them and claims them and names them as his own children exactly where they are. And that, and that God does this because God's grace is enough. And that God's blessing is enough. And God's presence is enough. And God's love is enough. Because God loves each and every one of us just the way we are. And loves us enough that he's not going to leave us there alone. He's always with us and he's always protecting us. He's walking with us hand in hand and helping us to do the things that he's called us to do. And there's nothing that's ever going to separate us from that. That's the very last part of this thing in Romans where it says, not death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else. Nothing else is going to separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Not death, not life, not angels, not rulers, not things that are here, not things that are going to come, not any kind of powers that could come over anything. No matter how high we go, no matter how low we go. There's nothing in this whole world that's going to keep God from us. Because God loves us so much, and each and every one of us, as we are, is enough. And that's why God sent his spirit, so that we could be empowered by his love to go into the world and to share that love with everyone else. This past weekend, if you, if you haven't seen it, you can see it. Part of what Karis talked about this past weekend is recorded and it's on Facebook. It was powerful. And it hit these kids someplace where they needed to be hit. And I think it's powerful enough that each one of you should hear it as well. Because it's going to hit you, I think, where you need to be hit. Because God loves us. Yeah, it's going to smack you upside the head. Because that's sometimes what we need. Because we think we have to have everything right. We think that our lives need to be perfect. Well, you know what? Even as Christians, our lives are not perfect. Our lives are turmoil sometimes. But no matter what's happening in, us, in your life, I can guarantee you that God is with you. And he's walking with you. You may not feel it, but he's there. He's by your side. He's over top of you. He's behind you. He's in front of you. He's leading your way. He's guiding your path. He's there to be your friend. And he's there to shelter you and protect you all the ways that you go. Don't ever doubt that. No matter what darkness you're going through or what's happening in your life, always remember that God is with you. And that God loves you just the way you are. And that no matter what's going on, that you are always enough. And that's why he gave you his spirit. 
Because he wants you to go into the world to show others that God loves them just the way that they are. So that they can know how much God loves them. So that they can go and show other people how much God loves them. See how that works? Go into the world and show someone that they're loved. So that they can go and show someone that they're loved. So that they can go and show someone that they're loved. Because God is always with you. And empowers you too. So remember that you're enough. Okay, and that God loves you no matter what.